Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you so much for joining me today. On my channel I love to talk about all things sewing, including sewing patterns and fabrics and my top tips too. And today's vlog is all about my five favourite woven top patterns. And I love um, working with woven fabrics. There's such a range of beautiful fabrics out there to sew with. And I've pulled together five of my favourite woven top patterns that I think will work across the seasons. And I've got a few different fabric and pattern matches too to share with you. So let's get started. So I usually start my vlogs by telling you what I'm wearing. And today I'm wearing a woven top. I thought that'd be fitting since I'm talking all about my favourite woven tops. And this is actually the first pattern I want to talk about. This is a blouse pattern and it's this pattern here. It's the blouse by the Avid Seamstress. And this is the first blouse pattern I um, used and it was when I was quite early on in my sewing journey and this is the first um, version I actually made of this pattern. It's a lovely basic blouse pattern and perfect if you're a beginner to sewing blouses. Um, it's got a mandarin collar, which I think is a really lovely, pretty detail. And then it's got three quarter length sleeves with an elasticated cuff. So um, for a first blouse, it's perfect because you don't have to do the full um, kind of cuff that you'd cut on a standard shirt. It's got a button down placket and it's quite a loose fit um, blouse, so it's not got any darts. It's designed to be fairly loose and breezy, I think. But it's a great first pattern, not only because it's quite a straightforward blouse, but also in this pack, the pattern pack, you get a lot of information, which you always do with patterns by the Avid Seamstress. So you get quite a comprehensive um, instruction booklet, which really takes you through all the steps with really nice clear colour pictures. But then you also get a couple of other bits, including a sewing terms demystified um, document, checklist before you start sewing, and then fabric and sewing basics, and also details of taking measurements. So there's loads of information in there, so if you're fairly new to sewing, it's great to have a read through all of all of that. But um, the suggested fabrics for this um, blouse are um, cottons and other lightweight fabrics, and for my first version, I made this in a viscose, and it's got little, um, you might be able to see little foxes on it, I thought that was really cute, and a kind of ivory colour. And I got this from a Lamazi Fabrics but a very long time ago, so I don't think they have it in stock now, but I'll put a link down to Lamazi Fabrics and all the other fabric shops I mentioned below, in case you want to check them out. So the blouse pattern is designed for confident beginners. So I guess you might not want to try it as your first pattern because there are some sort of little technical bits like putting the mandarin collar in and doing the button placket. But um, if you've had a few woven projects under your belt, it'll be a really good one to try. Um, it's also, um, it's quite a roomy blouse. So um, it's not a fitted blouse, so it's really comfortable to wear. Um, I made the size zero, which is for measurements of 32 and a half bust in inches. 25 inch waist and 34.5 inches hips. And um, I'm actually 32, 26, 36, so my waist and hips are slightly larger than the size zero on this pattern. But it's quite a um, loose fitting blouse and the finished garment measurements come up larger, so I found that just fine for me. One thing I would note about this one is I found it used less fabric than the um, actual pattern envelope said. So I think for my size, um, and uh, for 145 centimetre wide fabric, it says you need two metres, but I only used one and a half metres. And I've got like a big um, stick, um, a big note somewhere on this pattern to say, if I'm ordering fabric for it in future, to only order one and a half metres. So you don't end up, I don't end up wasting too much. So that's something to note that you might not need quite as much fabric as the pattern envelope says, at least for my size. So it comes in sizes UK six to UK 22. And so the smallest one was 32 and a half inches for bust, 25 inch waist and 34.5 inches for hips. And that went up to a bust of 48 inches, waist of 42 inches and bust, um, hips of 51 inches. And yeah, it's great to be made in a variety of fabrics. So let me show you my versions. So this is the first version I made in a viscose and it's lovely because it's really flowy and drapey. And I'll put a picture up of me wearing it just so you can see what it looks like. Um, this is me wearing it today with a pair of jeans. And I've also got another photo of me wearing it with a skirt. So it's quite a great pattern because you can kind of dress it up and down. And also it's great for winter too because you can easily make it cosy with a cardigan on top. But I've made two other versions. My second version I made was in this beautiful um, Tana lawn fabric by Liberty, which I got from Guthrie Garnick. They always have a lovely selection of Liberty Tana lawns in stock. And I really like the kind of berry colours on here. And I think this suits my colouring, the um, navy and the red. Um, so yeah, this is um, a, a slightly different fabric, so it has a slightly different finish. It's not as um, floaty and drapey as my first version, but it is quite a soft cotton, so it doesn't feel too stiff to wear either. And I've worn this version a lot, I really like it. And it's a really comfy blouse to wear because it's quite loose. I'll put up a picture of me wearing that so you can see how that one looks on me too. And then I made my final version in chambray fabric, and it's this one here. 
Um, yeah, I had this chambray left over from another project. It was another early, uh, one of my early sews where I bought more fabric and realised I didn't need as much. And I was really pleased to find I had just enough to squeeze out this blouse. And I thought it was a bit different, a chambray blouse. Um, a bit like a denim shirt, but a lot softer and more comfy to wear. So it's quite, it's not super drapey because it's a cottony fabric, but it's really comfy and soft to wear. And then I added on these little buttons um, I had left over from another project again, which I thought were quite cute. Um, so yeah, that's my chambre version. Um, so they're all quite different, my three versions. I'll put up a, a, a picture of my chambre version. I think it looks quite nice with kind of a statement skirt. So here I'm wearing it with a um, estu um, estuary skirt by So Liberated in a rayon. And I really like that combination. But those are my three versions um, and I really like them all. And it's just such a relaxed, easy, everyday blouse to wear. So I'd really recommend that. The, day, the blouse by the Avid Seamstress. My second favourite woven top pattern is a really fun one and it was released just last year and I've made two versions and I really love, um, I love sewing them and I love wearing them too. And it's using this pattern here, the Sagebrush Top by Friday Pattern Company. So it's a lovely woven top and um, it's got some really pretty details. I'll show you the line drawings. It's got a lovely ruffle at the front. It's got these puff sleeves which um, finish above your elbow and are finished with an elasticated cuff. And it's got a little tie at the back of the neck and it's got a lovely um, visible bias bound finish on the neckline which I think is really pretty too and quite fun to sew. See I've made two versions of this top and I'm, I really enjoyed um, sewing them and wearing them. I wasn't sure about it at first because of the volume of the sleeves but actually I surprised myself and I really like them. Another great thing about this pattern is it's got a really um, inclusive size range. So it goes from extra small to 7x. The extra small is um, bust 32, 33 inches waist 24, 25 inches and hips 34, 35 inches, up to 7x which is a bust of 59, 60 inches, waist of 52, 53 inches and hips of 62, 63 inches, so a really inclusive size range. And it also includes the finished garment measurement on the back of the pattern packet which I think always like to, to get an idea of how it would fit on you. It is designed to be quite loose and um, yeah breezy so I made the smallest size even though my waist and hips again fell a little bit out of it and it fits just fine because there's plenty of room there. Um, so yeah, it's just a really great fun top. It needs a fair amount of fabric just because the sleeves are quite wide. So I think um, the smallest size still needs um, yeah, 1.9 metres of fabric. And I think I did use most of that as well, particularly because you need to cut the bias binding for the neckline as well on the diagonal, which takes a bit of fabric to fit in too. It's a really enjoyable sew. And let me show you my two versions. The first version I made is in a double gauze. And here it is. It's this lovely um, white double gauze that I got from Minerva. And it's got this really pretty leaf or feather print design on. I'm never sure if it's feathers or leaves, but I really love it. I think it's really pretty. And so it's got, yeah, it's got the ruffle, the bias bound um, neckline that you can see, a little tie at the back, and then the elasticated sleeves. Um, and I'll put a picture of me wearing it so you can see how it looks on. Because it's double gauze, so it's a little, got a little bit of body to it. This has more of a puff sleeve than maybe a drapier fabric would. But I quite like that, I think it looks nice. Um, but what I did do actually, is take a little bit of the volume out of the sleeves. I just took a bit of a centre um, down, the, down the sleeve pattern. I just took a little wedge out of the middle of the sleeve. And it still eases in fine at the top because it's gathered there um, for the volume. So yeah, I just took a little bit out just so it wasn't too oversized on me because I thought it might end up wearing me then. But I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. And I've enjoyed wearing this one so much that I decided to make a second version in quite a different fabric. And here's my second version. And I made it in this really drapey, floaty um, rayon, which I got from System in Tarka. I think it's a Cloud 9 rayon. And it's got a lovely floral design on. I think the colours in this are really rich and so pretty. And it's such a lightweight rayon. It feels totally different to wear to the double gauze. It's much more drapey, so the sleeves are uh, much less of a feature in terms of the volume. It's got a more, I guess, a more sort of understated look. Um, but yeah, I really love it. Um, and I really enjoyed sewing with the rayon for it too. And I'll put a picture up of me wearing that one too, so you can see what that one looks like and see how the different fabrics give a slightly different effect. But that's the um, Sagebrush Top by Friday Pattern Company. I'd really recommend it for a fun sew. And the fit isn't too critical, so it is designed to be oversized and loose fitting. So there aren't, I know sometimes with woven fabrics, you not want to kind of make sure the fit's just right. But it's not too critical on that pattern, which is really nice and just makes it a really relaxed and um, fun sew. My next um, favourite woven top pattern is another blouse, but it's quite different to the Avid Seamstress blouse. It's got some quite different details. They're really pretty as well. And it's this um, one here. It's the Megan Nielsen Sudley blouse, and it also comes the dress version too. And so yeah, the thing I like about this one is the neckline, it's so pretty. As you can see here, it features a keyhole neckline with a little tie there. And you can also add an optional collar if you like. And it comes in a range of sleeve options. And you can also make it into a dress with a gathered skirt, which I haven't done, but I would like to do because I think it's a really lovely option too. 
So this pattern here is not designed for beginners, it's a, probably an intermediate pattern because it's quite a fiddly um, thing attaching the bias, you use bias binding um, to finish off the neckline and the keyhole. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend this as a beginner pattern, you might want to be a bit more confident um, using this one. And it's designed for light to medium weight woven fabrics, including cotton and um, rayon and linen. So there's quite a range of fabrics you can make this in, depending on the effect you wanted. And actually, interestingly, I've got the old version of the pattern here, but this pattern has been re-released now to include a couple of extra options. So the updated and pattern has an extra option, which is a long sleeve version with elasticated cuffs, which looks really nice. And also there's now two different size ranges available. There's um, a 0 to 20 size range, and also I think size 14 or 16 to 30 size range, the curve range that's called, which is great. So it kind of is really inclusive now, this pattern. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've made three versions of this pattern. I really enjoyed sewing them. I think they're lovely because um, they've got a lo few little pretty details, but they can kind of be dressed up and dressed down too, um, depending on whether you want to wear them with a pair of jeans or maybe dress them up with a really nice skirt. Um, so let me show you my versions. The first version I made is this really gorgeous tensel fabric. And it was my first time working with tensel. I think it's a tensel lawn. And it's just the softest, um, floatiest fabric ever. It's so lovely to wear. It's really lovely and soft. And as you can see, it's perfect because this blouse is designed to be quite loose fitting. It hasn't got any darts or anything. So the drapiness of this fabric works really well, I think. Um, and I actually ad adjusted the pattern slightly to make it long sleeved and added my own little elasticated cuff. So I've now got a long sleeve version because um, I thought that would just get more wear for me. But it's really comfy to wear because it hasn't got any darts and it isn't fitted. And you can actually, um, oh, I forgot to mention, you can actually, this is actually reversible. So I could actually wear it this way around as well if I wanted and have the little tie detail at the back. So that's quite clever as well, I think, and adds an extra option. Um, but I'll put a picture of me wearing this one. This fabric came from Sew Me Sunshine, um, and it's just, it was really lovely to sew with, actually. I, was, I thought it might be a bit tricky and slippery, but actually it behaved a lot better than I expected. But if you're um, a fairly new to sewing and wanting to try this blouse, I maybe would recommend you trying it in a less slippery and more stable fabric to start with. That'll just make it a little bit easier when you come to the details, like attaching the bias binding um, around the collar here. But yeah, there's me wearing that one. Um, yeah, I really love it. Um, it's really um, floaty and um, co really comfy to wear too. Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, in terms of sizing, I made the size extra small, which is an old sizing, and that is a bust of 34, waist of 26, and hips of 36. So that is um, just my waist and hip size, but the bust is slightly larger. Um, and um, it does come out fairly oversized, but I think with the drapey fabric, it's not too critical. I think if I'd made it in a maybe more of a, a, a more sort of stiffer fabric or a crisper fabric, like a cotton poplin or something, I might want to size down a little bit. Um, yeah, just take a little bit of the, the, the volume out, just to make sure it didn't end up looking too big. But I think their larger size range now does take the sizes down a little bit further now to a slightly smaller bust than a 34 inches. So that's great too. But let me show you my second version. My second version is again in a, a very drapey fabric. And this is an Italian viscose fabric that I got from Ditto Fabrics. So it has a different feeling to it, to a standard viscose. It's got a little bit more texture to it, perhaps. Um, but yeah, it's just a really fun fabric, this one. It's got these really quite large um, kittens on it and little um, white spots. It was just a bit of fun, this one. Um, yeah, <laughs> just I thought it was a really cute fabric. I couldn't resist it. And I'll put a picture of me wearing it. Um, again, I made the same um, alteration as I did to the first version. I made it with long sleeves with elasticated cuffs, just because I thought I'd get more wear out of it. But it's quite a nice one to wear with win in winter with a pair of jeans and a black cardi, um, just to make you feel a little bit more dressy, um, but, but equally fairly comfy too. That's my second version. And then my final version, I decided to make a different version. I made a short sleeve version using this um, lovely viscose crepe dobby. So it's got a really lovely texture to it with these little spots. So again, it's quite drapey, um, but this one I thought maybe would be perfect for spring with a pair of jeans um, or maybe a little skirt. Um, and it's really lightweight and loose, so it's, yeah, nice and, uh, yeah, relaxed. I did have a bit of a nightmare with this fabric. I found it really stretched a lot more than I expected, so I had to end up adjusting the sleeves a little bit because the um, sleeves stretched out and the, um, the um, here, the sleeve didn't sit here. It ended up a little, sitting a bit too far down and it's not supposed to be drop sleeve. Um, but yeah, I got there in the end and I'm looking forward to wearing this one this spring. I think you can't go wrong with a kind of a white um, top to wear with a pair of jeans. So that's my last version of that one, the Megan Nielsen Sudley blouse. And I, yeah, I'd love to make the dress too. I think that'll be really nice too. My next favourite woven top pattern is one I find re myself reaching for over and over again when it comes towards summer. But I think it would, could work, also work all year round. And it's a great beginner pattern too. It's so yeah, suitable for beginners. And it's this pattern here. It's the Stevie Top and Tunic by Tilly and the Buttons. So it's one of their kind of classic um, beginner patterns. Um, and I'll show you the line drawings. It's uh, designed to be either a tunic or a top. It's got no um, buttons or darts, and so it makes it fairly easy to construct. It's got a little tie at the back here, 
and you can add a pockets at the front and then it's got grown on sleeves with a little cuff detail you can add to which I think is really nice. So yeah, this is um, one of the earlier um, patterns I made. I wasn't sure about it at first when I first saw this pattern. Um, I think it came out before I started sewing and then I kind of came familiar with it. And I thought it would look a bit shapeless and maybe um, wouldn't suit me very much. But actually I found, particularly if you make it in a drapey fabric, it does give some shape and it's just so cool and breezy and relaxed to wear. The arms aren't tight, they're really loose, so it's perfect for summer. But I think it would also be really lovely to layer up, maybe with kind of like a high neck top, like a Freya top underneath. Um, would be great in winter too and you can make it with all different sorts of fabrics. I recommend fabrics are light to medium weight woven fabrics such as linen, double gauze, chambray, cotton lawn or rayon, so quite a few options there. The only um, thing about this pattern I would mention, it hasn't got the biggest size range, and um, it goes from a UK 6 to a UK 20, so the smallest size is bust 30, waist 24, hips 33, up to um, bust 44, waist 38, hips 47, so it's not got the greatest size range ever. But it is a really great pattern if you're looking for a beginner woven pattern, and I've got so much wear out of my versions. I make the size 2, which is bust 32, waist 26, hips 35, and that seems to fit me well. That's my usual Tilly pattern. And it's just a really nice, um, easy, straightforward sew to make. So if you're kind of in between projects and want something that's a bit of a palette cleanser, I'd recommend this one. It's so lovely and breezy for summer. So let me show you my versions. The first version I made was um, this version here um, in this beautiful um, Rifle Paper Company rayon, which I got from Lamazi Fabrics. And so I was quite nervous actually making this um, because it's quite a pricey fabric. But um, the t this Stevie top only uses 1.2 metres of fabric for my size. So I thought, well, that's not too much to spend. And I'll hopefully end up with a lovely top out of it. Um, so yeah, I made the standard top. I didn't add a pocket because I thought with a drapey fabric it may just feel like it drags down. I wouldn't really use a pocket there anyway. And then I added on these um, kind of cute pink ties at the back. Um, so it ties up at the back with those ribbons. You can also make a little um, um, rouleau loop and button closure as well if you want to. So that's another option, but I haven't used that option to date. But yeah, this is the first version I made. Um, this Rifle Paper Company ray um, viscose or rayon is actually really stable to sew with. It's not the lightest weight uh, rayon, so it's a really nice one to start with, actually. Um, and it's so summery, this one. I love wearing this in summer. And what I like about it as well is it covers up my shoulders from the sun so I don't get burnt. But it's really breezy and um, loose, too. I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see it on. But yeah, that was my first Stevie version. And let me show you my others. My second version was in this art gallery rayon, again from Lamazi Fabrics. And I think it kind of has like a 70s vibe with the, the large flowers and the colours. This is a really, really lightweight, floaty, soft um, rayon um, or viscose. So it's really lovely to sew with. And this one I made just with the fabric, um, fab the ties in the same fabric as the top because I wanted to keep it fairly simple. But I've got loads of wear out of this one. It's, a, yeah, just a really relaxed, breezy top to wear for summer again. And I'll put a picture of me wearing it so you can see that one. And the final version I've made for myself of this Stevie top was in this really fun, um, kind of large scale, kind of bright, modern leopard print type fabric with these different colours on. Um, and again, this one I made with the um, just fat ties in the same fabric, just to keep it simple because the print's quite bold. And I love wearing this one. It always makes me happy to wear this one. Um, and again, I'll put up a photo. So they're all in kind of fairly drapey fabrics that I've chosen, but I have seen some lovely versions in some cottons and double gauzes too. It just will give a slightly different feel and it will maybe be a little bit less drapey on you. Just a little bit more of a boxy shape, I guess. I've also made a couple more versions. I made one for my mum because she really liked those tops and so she asked for a version too. So she chose um, one I'll put that up too. That was again a viscose fabric, a navy viscose. And I really like that one. I know she's worn that one a fair bit. Um, and I've also made a couple of dress versions. So uh, that I made the kind of tunic length, but what I did to make it, give it a bit more shape was to make a waist tie in the same fabric. So I've made two versions and I'll put those up too so you can see how it looks. So that's a lovely summer dress option too. So I like how the Stevie pattern is really flexible. Um, and I said I would really love to have a go of layering it up in winter too. I haven't done it yet, but I think it would look really nice. But that's my next um, favourite woven top pattern, the Stevie top. It's a great for beginners, a really nice, um, easy sew, and, um, and yeah, like really fun for a different print because it's quite a simple shape. My next favourite woven top pattern is a bit more of an involved sew. It's maybe not so much a beginner sew and one to try if you want to stretch yourselves on some different skills. And it's this one here. It's the Closet Court Calais shirt and shirt dress. So it's a real classic and I think a lot of people have made this one. And it's lovely because it works so well in so many different fabrics and it also comes with lots of different options. So it's quite fun to play around with the different options. So it's got some quite nice large um, line drawings on the front of its um, pattern instructions envelope, so I'll show you. You can do three different lengths, 
a crop length, a tunic length, and a sort of shirt length, but it is quite a short shirt dress. Um, so yeah, if you wanted something a little bit, um, to cover up a little bit more, you might want to lengthen that one, I find. It's got different um, um, pleats at the back. It's got an inverted pleat and a box pleat option. Different collars, a mandarin collar and a sort of classic collar. You can add a pocket. It's also got a couple of different hems. The um, tunic and shirt dress here show a hem that's finished with bias binding, and it was my first time doing bias binding um, on the hem, actually, for the Calais, and I really thought it was a lovely finish. And this um, one here has more of an oversized hem, and I'll show you a version with that hem too. And it's also got different plackets as well, so loads of different skills to try. A popover placket, a hidden placket, and then a kind of standard sort of um, visible placket. So yeah, it's just loads of different options. And I do find that the Closet Core instructions are always very clear and comprehensive, so they're a nice one to try honing some new skills using one of their patterns. So yeah, it's, it's a great pattern with loads of different options. I think you get a lot of bang for your buck with this one. Um, the recommended fabrics for this one are... Um, Light to medium weight rovens and shirting such as poplin, chambray, tensel, linen, rayon, um, voile and flannel. So loads of different options and I think you can really change the look of it depending whether you went for a really drapey fabric or um, more of a stiffer fabric that showed up the boxy fit. Because it is, again, a pattern without darts so it's not designed to be too fitted so it's really comfy and wearable too. Um, and um, it comes in sizes 0 to 20. Um, so again, not the biggest size range ever. Um, the bust is smallest bust size 0 is 31 inches and then waist 24 and hips 33 up to size 20 which is bust 46 waist 39 and hips 48 but it is designed to be oversized the so finished garment measurements do come up a little bit larger so I think I made the size 0 um, even though um, all my measurements are slightly bigger than that and because I didn't want it to be too oversized and actually it came out fitting me just fine so there is quite a lot of wiggle room in the sizing here um, but let me show you my versions. So the first version I made was the dress version because I thought it would be quite fun to have a kind of summery shirt dress in my wardrobe because it's got short sleeves, it's quite suitable for summer. Um, and here it is. It's made in this lovely um, cotton yarn dyed gingham fabric that I got from Samey Sunshine. And I had a little play with the gingham. Um, I made the um, placket at the front um, use a sort of triangle diamond shape just to give it a bit of fun. And also on the little... Um, cuffs here at the edge and also on the yoke at the back as well just had a bit of fun with the diamond shapes there so I made this one with a box pleat at the back because I thought that would suit the dress better my personal preference I made the full collar I added the pockets on as well as you can see there kind of tried to pattern match that up um, and I used the popover plackets and it was my first time um, making a popover placket so that was quite fun to try and the instructions were really clear and led me through that really well so I really enjoyed this make and I want to show you another little detail which is how the bias bound hem looks and I think it's such a pretty way of um, applying a hem, particularly on a curve here. It gives a really lovely finish. Um, so yeah, that's really nice. And I think it looks quite nice, the diamond print there against the, um, against the check. It's almost a shame it's not visible, really. Um, but yeah, it's got a high, slightly high-low hem at the bottom. Um, and I length, lengthened this a little bit because I did think um, when I held the pattern piece up, it might come up a little bit too short. And I wanted to make it wearable as a dress rather than something I'd have to wear over trousers. But that's my version. Um, I'll put a picture of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. It's a really nice one for summer because it is quite loose fitting and nice and breathable with the cotton. And yeah, it was just a really fun make too. My second version was another one in a cotton fabric, but it's an embroidery anglais this time. And this lovely um, floral, again, it came from Somi Sunshine. It's got this lovely sort of daisy print on, which I thought was really pretty. And I made quite a different version this time. This time I went for the mandarin collar and then I added the pocket again. And then I went, decided to go for a hidden placket. And it's hard to see with the light, but there is. Um, again, um, with the hidden placket, it was nice just to give it a go because I hadn't tried it before. And my buttons, this fabric is kind of fairly white and my buttons are a bit more creamy coloured, as you can see. But with the hidden placket, I think you can get away with um, using a slightly different colour button because you don't see it. So it's quite a nice way of maybe using up a few buttons you've got um, in your collection that you could kind of, yeah, rather than having to buy new ones. So this is the version I made. I made it with the inverted pleat at the top. And it's, it's a crop version here, so there's an inverted piece at the top. And you can see on this fabric, because it's quite a nice sheer fabric, you can see on the bottom um, the detail of the hem, which is this kind of larger um, hem band, which I think is quite pretty. So yeah, um, that's, that's the version I made. And I think even though this is the crop version, I still added a couple of inches to it, because I thought it was going to come up super cropped. And now it just sort of skims the top of my high-waisted jeans, which I quite like. I'll put a picture up so you can see me wearing that one too. But um, yeah, I haven't made this... Um, this pattern in a drapier fabric. These are both fairly crisp, well not super crisp cottons, they've got a bit of softness to them, but they're definitely not drapey fabrics, just because I thought with all the little techniques involved and the plackets, I wanted to make sure I sewed it accurately and I thought a sort of more um, crisp, well-behaved fabric would be the way to go. 
And I also like how that kind of holds the shape and shows all the details really nicely too. So I'm pleased that's what I use for those. But those are my two um, shirt versions. I also made one further version of the Calais, which is actually I hacked it into a dress with a gathered skirt. And I put up a picture of that one and I made that one in a cotton lawn, a beautiful um, feather print or leaf print, I never know, um, cotton lawn from Lady McElroy. And I talk more about that hack in a separate video, which I'll put a link to down below. Um, in case you want to check out how I did that, because I thought it hacked really nicely into a dress and I got a lot of wear out of that dress last summer too. So that's uh, my other version of the Cosicore Calais shirt, but it's just a really great pattern, um, great instructions, um, lots of little details to try and mix and match. And yeah, so um, and quite wearable too, because it is quite a relaxed fit. So that's the Cosicore Calais shirt and shirt dress pattern. So those are my five favourite woven top patterns. But there's one other one I wanted to sneak in. Um, as I usually do, because it was really hard to decide on five. And this is a great basic t-shirt pattern that I thought was worth mentioning. And it's this pattern here. It's a Scout tee by Grainline Studio. So it's a lovely basic woven t-shirt, perfect to be made in a plain sort of fabric to be a great basic in your wardrobe. Or you could have fun making it in a bit more of an exciting print. There's not too much pattern matching there to be done like there would be on a shirt or something. So it's a really lovely basic. It's got a slightly scooped um, neck little cap sleeves, and then the neckline's bias bound. So it's designed to be a beginner pattern, but I think you could learn some good techniques from it, um, using, using bias binding to finish the neckline, and also setting in the sleeves, just a couple of techniques there to try. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really lovely one by Grainline Studio. Um, it's also a really great strap, scrap buster as well. Um, I found my size, uh, which is the size zero, which is bust 32, waist 35, hips 35, um, I can squeeze it into less than a metre of fabric, so it's great for that. And um, yeah, it's just a really um, yeah, straightforward one. I like Grainline Studio instructions. They're very clear and um, they take you through with not too many frills or extra bits. It's just very much, um, yeah, straightforward language. It goes up to a size 18, which is bust 44, waist 37, hips 47. And with this one, the finished garment measurements are quite a lot bigger than your actual size, just because it needs to be able to be got over your head. So there's a bit, needs to be a bit of give in it. So it's designed to be quite a loose fitting t-shirt. It's not a fitted t-shirt by any means. There aren't any darts or anything. It is very straightforward. Um, and it's designed for light to medium weight woven fabrics, including cotton, silk, chambray, um, wool crepe. So a whole range of options. And I'll show you my versions. So my first version I made, the fabric will be very familiar <laughs> in this fox print fabric, the same as I used for my avid seamstress blouse. And the reason I made this one is because, as I mentioned, the fabric requirements um, for the Avid Seamstress blouse, I found I need, needed a lot less than the pat pattern said. So I had quite a lot left over, so I just about squeezed this t-shirt out of it. So I was really pleased with that because I love this fabric, because I thought it'd be fun to have a basic t-shirt in it too. And it's nice and drapey, so although it's quite um, a relaxed fit t-shirt because it drapes, it doesn't feel too big. So that was my first version I made, and it was actually my first time applying bias bounding around a neckline and I found um, that really a handy skill to learn. So that was really great to have a go at that one. And then I used, I made one more in this beautiful um, Atelier Brunette viscose fabric, which has got this lovely sort of detail on it. Um, and the nice thing about this t-shirt, because it doesn't take too much fabric, is you can choose a more expensive fabric knowing that you won't need too much of it. Um, so, and you can still get a lovely fabric that you can wear. And I thought this one would be nice to wear maybe with jeans and then a cardigan where I can pick out one of the colours from the little flex in the cardigan. So yeah, they're just, it's just a really great basic, um, a straightforward sew. You can learn a couple of techniques, but it's equally um, not too um, testing, um, not too many fiddly bits. So it's a good one to use um, um, for a first go of a kind of more slippery woven fabric, like a viscose, if you haven't used that before. So those are my two versions, and that's the Grainline Scout Tee, just a really basic t-shirt pattern. So those are my five favourite woven top sewing patterns, plus one sneaky extra one. I really enjoyed having a think about which were my favourite patterns and getting out the garments I've sewn. And I hope you enjoyed hearing about them. I really enjoyed sharing them with you. Um, I'll try and link down below the fabric shops where I got the different fabrics. Quite a lot of them I got a while ago, so they may not be in stock now, but you might enjoy having a browse on the online shops too. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'd love it if you enjoyed the vlog for you to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, if you would consider subscribing and also pressing the notification button so that you can be notified of my future vlogs, that'll be amazing. Anyway, thank you so much for watching again. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.